Hi, I'm Dave Schneider um, for IEEE Spectrum here with my latest hands-on project, which is a cordless soldering iron, uh, but it's a kind of special one. It's got a temperature feedback control. What I'm going to do here is meld this with this. All right, so... Here we go with the Weller switch assembly. So this is the part that turns on and off. All right, let me explain how this Weller Magnostat system works. Um, the uh, business end of the iron has a switch in it, and the switch is magnetically controlled. So there's a movable magnet, and it's attracted toward the tip, which is a ferromagnet, uh, at least when it's cold. So when the tip is cold, that uh, movable magnet, that hatched area, um, moves toward the tip to the right, switching on the switch, sending power to a heating element. When the tip gets good and toasty, uh, up to some desired set point, uh, the tip uh, exceeds its Curie temperature, it becomes unmagnetic, and that movable magnet uh, in the shaft moves in the opposite direction to the left, turning off power. And uh, by this means, you get feedback, and the tip stays at the temperature you want it to be, rather than getting too hot or being too cold. The part of the soldering iron that gets hot. So the heating element is uh, basically a nichrome wire, kind of like your toaster, uh, but it's uh, wrapped inside a barrel, uh, referred to here as TC208. That's the part number from Weller. It fits over the switch and uh, the tip goes into the, the end of the heating element. Um, tip's held on by yet another barrel that fits over that heating element. Okay, first thing to do is to take the maglite flashlight apart. Step one is prying out this rubber seal around the switch. All right, that's off. Step two is a little tricky. We have to take this Torx wrench and stick it in that hole and uh, unscrew a screw there at the bottom. The tricky part is finding the right wrench. It's impossible because most Torx uh, have a wider diameter. Uh, the way I got this was to buy a replacement switch. came with a wrench. goes in. A few turns. And that's probably enough. So now we uh, do the normal sort of disassembly of the flashlight by unscrewing. Push this in, and we should be able to push this back. And now we got the switch out. This is the part we're going to be modifying, so let's continue taking this apart. Take that off. Handily, this wrench works for this screw as well. Push this piece out. Get rid of that. Okay, in here is this nice little spring with some end caps. And uh, this is what we're going to be modifying because we need to make some electrical connections. One to this little end cap and one to this barrel. Okay, ugly, but it will work. Okay, so now we've done the hard part. Soldering a wire there and a wire there. We're going to start reassembling things. Take our switch, making sure this is depressed. Put it back into the body. And now tighten that screw down. 
to hold it in place. Okay. And reassemble these parts, starting with this one to this plastic sleeve. The two of them into the barrel, the spring, taking care with this end cap. Goes back into there. So we now have it back assembled with two convenient leads that are switched power and a little spring action. I ordered a few uh, 16 inch thick, two inch diameter aluminum discs off of eBay for a buck a piece. Uh, so no uh, tricky machining here, just some holes to drill. All right. That's pretty pleasing. So basically it's like uh, electrical work in your house. You get some wire nuts at the hardware store and you start wiring things together. Pretty much simple as that. So we've got the uh, power coming out of the central unit. Uh, the red uh, going into the fuse, out of the fuse, into the magnetic switch, out of the magnetic switch, to the heating element back through the return heating element and back to ground. So it's a matter of assembling it. The uh, remarkable thing here is that the physical dimensions of the flashlight were such uh, that it really kind of matched the requirements of the, uh, the uh, switch and the heating element from the Weller soldering iron. So it, it all just kind of worked out. The other thing that uh, pretty much worked out were the batteries. Uh, two D cells won't do it. You need 24 volts for this soldering iron. Uh, but I could achieve that with this cute little holder that holds three AA batteries in series. And by putting 14,500 lithium ions in there, I got 24 volts. One set of lithium ions. Another set of lithium ions. On the end cap, under spring tension. Lastly, a little rubber seal back. I discovered earlier it was easier to say than to do, but here we go. And now we've got it. All right, so if you're now out in the woods or someplace where you don't have power and you need to make an electrical connection, you now have a very nice soldering iron for doing that. Just like at home. Hooray!